Hello everybody, Jardis here, and in today's video I'm yet on another Elementalist tune, and I'm going to be showing you a single attunement Elementalist build. Now the reason why I've been doing single attunement Elementalist builds is because of the fact that online when you look up an Elementalist build, a lot of them involve a rather complex rotation system for their attunements. For example, it usually is you stay in one attunement for two skills, then you switch to another attunement, then use two skills, then switch to a third attunement, use two skills, rinse and repeat. And But that can be a little complex and too confusing for some people, including myself. My fingers are not octopuses, so I can't constantly be switching attunements and remembering what it is that I'm supposed to be doing because it's just a little too much for me. Hopefully, by keeping to a single attunement, we can negate all that complexity and make it a little simpler for those of us who want to learn the Elementalist playstyle. Now, I have already done an Elementalist build for single attunements for Earth, Air, and Fire, and their links will be in the description below. This one is for water. Now, before we begin into this, I do want to point out that this is not the greatest Elementalist build out there. There are much better builds. Of course, there are also ones that are more complex as well. This is more of along the lines of a low intensity build, if you want to call it that. Now, um, of all the single Elementalist builds that I've made so far the water one here is perhaps one of the more confusing and a little i i don't know how else to describe it other than the fact that it is sort of like for lack of a better term a hodgepodge it doesn't have a real strength per se at least in terms of solo play because its offensive capabilities are not that great Water attunements are mostly about support and healing, and it would probably be better in a group setting. However, I'm going to go ahead and try and do this in a solo area. But before we get into that, let's get into the actual build itself. Now, the gear that I'll be using is the Marauder set for power, precision, vitality and ferocity because again water does not have a whole lot of offensive capabilities so the power precision and ferocity will definitely help us in that on outgoing damage department and the vitality because of the fact that we want to have a little bit of survivability now the rune I'm using of all things is actually the superior rune of the ogre. The reason for this is because not only does it give us more power and ferocity for our damage output, but it also gives us a rock dog while we're in combat. And believe it or not, we're actually going to be using a lot of temporary minions in order to help us you know, deal the damage that we need. So we will be using rock dogs as well as elementals. For our weapon, we are using the main hand, a hammer, which again is Marauder sets, with sigils of force and accuracy. For our secondary weaponry, we'll be using double dagger. And for our trinkets, we're actually using a hodgepodge of jade or oricalcum, I believe it's how it's pronounced. I do apologize there. But jade for the for the amulet and the two rings for the power, precision, vitality, and ferocity. But for the accessory, we will be using Fang of Tocotl in order to give us a little bit more toughness as well as some condition damage. We do have some condition damage that we will be doing, mostly in the form of chill and vulnerability excuse me vulnerability and this will help with that now for the build we're actually going water arcane and catalyst for water we are going two three three for arcane we're going one 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 and for Catalyst, we are also going 1, 1, and 1. And for, okay, now, 
to explain this. For water, the piercing shards. Vulnerability you inflict it has increased duration. Deal increased strike damage to vulnerable foes. Damage bonus is doubled while attuned to water. Well, we are sticking to water and we want that vulnerability. And, say, and because we are sticking to water, we will be getting double that damage. Again, increasing our offensive capabilities. For flow wa like water, deal increased strike damage when your health is above the threshold. Blocking or invading an attack heals you. Because we have some heals, this will be able to keep us up our health above the threshold, which means we will be getting some more, even more damage output. Plus, getting an additional heal by evading and blocking it doesn't really hurt our survivability. And for Soothing Power, Soothing Mist is more effective. And for those who don't know, Soothing Mist is actually the primary here, where you and your allies recover health while you are attuned to water. Again, water is a lot about healing, and as long as we have our health up, we'll constantly be flowing like water to be dealing more damage. Now, to the Arcane. We are going with Arcane Precision. Our critical strikes have a chance to inflict a condition based on our attunements. Because we're sticking into water, we will be dealing more vulnerability to deal even more increased damage to our targets. Again, vulnerability and chill are the two primary conditions that we will be doing with this build. For Arcane Resurrection, this is for more of a group effect, mainly because what it does is that we will cast a geyser while we are reviving a down ally. Geysers now partially revi revive down allies, and when you begin reviving an ally, you gain an aura based on that attunement. We will be getting the Frost Aura, which, in which gives us a 10% decrease to incoming damage. Now, we will be getting these auras as well, and they will be very effective when we get to the catalyst line. The third one is the evasive arcana. Basically we cast a skill whenever we dodge based on our attunement. Well since we are going with water we are doing cleansing wave which basically removes excuse me removes conditions off of us. Since we have healing we don't have much in terms of condition cleansing. This is where that comes in. For catalyst with the hardened auras, damage reduction is increased when you gain an aura. Remember what I said about the auras. This is one of the things that will help us survive. Empowering auras. Gain increased outgoing damage when you gain an aura. Once again, once we have an aura, not only will we be surviving, we will be also getting more damage output. And then finally, staunch auras. Gain stability when you gain an aura. Well. Not only are we dealing damage and getting survivability, we're also making it so that we're unmovable force. <laughs> okay, now to test how this build shows goes, I'm actually in New Koenig City above this hero point. Oh, before I do that, before I do that, I almost forgot to show you what my selectable skills are. We are going for Glyph of Elemental Harmony. Heal yourself and gain a boon based on your attunement, which is regen, because we are sticking to the water. We are using Signet of Fire to improve our critical chances, plus it also gives us an ability to burn our foes if we choose to use it. We are using Shattering Ice. Your successful attacks will trigger an additional strike on nearby enemies that apply chill. If this is cast within the range of your water sphere, the duration is increased. This is where a lot of our chilled effects will be coming into play. And again, we will be using the Glyph of Lesser Elemental and Glyph of Elementals in order to help supplicate our damage output. Okay, now I do apologize for that. Now let's get back into what we were going to do. I was going to test this build by going to this hero point. Now, a side note, if for whatever reason the new Kinneg event completer is a daily for the end of dragons, you can repeat this hero point four times to complete that event daily. Okay, now before we start, let us summon our 
two elementals. We're going to go ahead and trigger this. And now we're going to get involved. We want to make sure that our Jade Sphere is down as often as possible so we can get the benefits of the skills that we are using, such as Shattering Ice and the Grand Finale uh, Water Sphere. Now, again, this is not the most damaging build there is out there for Elementalists, but this does provide an alternative for those of us who'd like to learn how to use a water attunement build. Now, again, it wasn't as fast speaking, as I would have liked, but again, it, you notice that we did not actually lose a whole lot of health. But then again, this is a small hero point, and it is not really much of a test, but I wanted to give you an example of what it's like. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to share this information with anybody who'd like to try building a water elementalist build. And I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, happy gaming!